Did you know that around 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed every day across the globe? That's a lot of coffee. You're definitely not alone if you can't function in the morning without a steaming cup of joe. But have you ever considered where coffee comes from? For instance, who discovered the coffee bean? Where was it discovered? In this video, we're going to be sharing the surprising history of the discovery of the coffee bean. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one. Now, let's get into it. Who discovered the coffee bean and how did they do so? The history of coffee dates back many millennia to the ancient coffee forests on the Ethiopian plateau. There, according to folklore, the treasured beans were discovered by a goat herder by the name of Kaldi. According to the legend, Kaldi discovered the coffee bean after observing that his goats became so energized after eating the beans that they danced and refused to go to sleep at night. The goats were wide-eyed and excited, and goat herder Kaldi soon became delighted. Could these beans have the same effect on humans? The local monastery's abbot heard about Kaldi's discovery and used the beans to make a beverage. He soon learned that the drink kept him awake throughout the long hours of nightly prayer. The revitalizing beans became known after the abbot informed the other monks at the monastery about their effects. Word spread eastward, and coffee would soon make its arrival in the Arabian Peninsula. From there, it started a voyage that would take the beans all over the world. Is a coffee bean actually a bean? The phrase coffee bean is actually quite deceptive. In reality, coffee beans aren't really beans at all. Coffee beans are actually the seed or pit of the fruit that grows on coffee plants, despite the fact that they resemble beans quite a little. Coffee cherries are tiny, vivid red fruits that grow on coffee trees. Although the cherries are primarily skin and seeds and not particularly tasty, they are full of antioxidants. The early cultivation of coffee the Arabian Peninsula was where the coffee trade began. By the 15th century, coffee was being grown in Yemen, and by the 16th century, Persia, Egypt, Syria and Turkey were all familiar with it. In addition to being drunk in households, coffee was also enjoyed in the numerous Kwave Kane, or public coffee houses, that began to appear in cities throughout the Near East. Because of their unparalleled popularity, people frequented the coffee shops for all kinds of social contact, the patrons enjoyed music, shows, chess and reading the news, in addition to drinking coffee and chatting. Coffee shops quickly gained notoriety as important centres for information exchange, receiving the name Schools of the Wise. The tens of thousands of pilgrims that travel to the holy city of Mecca each year from all over the world has increased awareness of this wine of Araby. As you may expect, coffee's overall popularity skyrocketed in the decades that followed. Coffee's arrival in Europe European explorers who visited the Near East brought back stories of a dark, bitter beverage. Coffee then made its way to Europe in the 17th century and quickly expanded to other regions of the continent. Out of suspicion or dread, some people reacted unfavorably to this new beverage, calling it the bitter invention of Satan. When coffee first arrived in Venice in 1615, the local clergy outlawed its usage. Pope Clement VIII was asked to intervene when the situation got out of hand. He made the decision to try the beverage for himself before passing judgment. He gave the drink his mark of approval because it was so satisfying. Despite this disagreement, coffee shops were quickly turning into centers of social contact and communication in the major cities of England, Austria, France, Germany and Holland. Because one cent could buy a cup of coffee and interesting conversation, institutions in England were erected and known as penny universities. Coffee began to take the place of the then popular breakfast beverages, beer and wine. Because individuals who drank coffee instead of alcohol were more awake and excited as the day began, the caliber of their work was noticeably higher. By the middle of the 17th century, there were over 300 coffee houses in London and many of them attracted patrons with similar interests, such as business people, shippers, brokers and artists. There are many different enterprises that have grown out of these speciality coffee shops. For instance, Lloyd's of London was founded at the Edward Lloyd Coffee House. Coffee's debut in the Americas 
The small beans were set to move even further west to conquer every country bordering the Atlantic Ocean after sweeping over Europe, Africa and the nations of the Indian Ocean. The Dutch made a choice to show their kindness at the beginning of the 18th century that would forever alter the world of coffee cultivation. In 1714, the mayor of Amsterdam gifted King Louis XIV of France a young coffee plant. Although coffee trees could not be grown in Holland, they could be maintained there in special greenhouses. In Paris's Royal Botanical Gardens, this shrub was preserved. Gabriel Mathieu de Clieux, a captain in the French Navy, was stationed at Martinique, but just so happened to be in Paris. It is unknown if de Clieux actually stole coffee tree trimmings from King Louis, or if King Louis himself gave the order for de Clieux to start a coffee plantation in Martinique. In any case, de Clieux packed his clippings and sailed for the Caribbean, which just so happened to offer the best conditions for growing coffee. De Clieux battled to maintain the life of his plant over the protracted travel. On the boat, there wasn't much water, but he managed to keep the plant alive by feeding it his own supply, and he, instead, suffered the thirst himself. He hid the sprouting coffee seed among other plants when he got to the island to keep it secure. Within three years, Guadeloupe, Martinique and Saint-Dominique all had coffee plantations. These plants will soon spread throughout the rest of the Caribbean, as well as Central and South America. Sir Nicholas Laws, the English governor of Jamaica, introduced coffee plants to his island in 1730. Coffee quickly spread deep into the Blue Mountains, a prime location for coffee cultivation. Coffee seeds continued being exported to new areas by missionaries, explorers, traders and colonists, and coffee plants were being planted all over the world. Both lush tropical woods and mountain highlands were used as plantation sites. Some crops were successful, while others were not. Coffee was one of the most lucrative export crops in the world at the end of the 18th century. Today, coffee is still the most sought-after commodity in the world after crude oil. How America shaped the coffee industry The Boston Tea Party and the American Revolution in the 18th century marked the beginning of America's relationship with coffee. To protest the English tax on tea, a group of patriots, many of whom were costumed as American Indians, boarded English tea ships that were docked in Boston Harbor. They then threw all of the tea into the water. Tea consequently lost its status as the preferred beverage in America and was replaced by coffee. Since that time, the United States has been the largest coffee importer and has continued to import significantly more coffee than any other nation. Many nations in South and Central America have benefited economically from this widespread reliance on beans. Coffee had become a worldwide sensation by the 19th century. It was transported everywhere and consumed. While the coffee bean itself had little more to explore, improvements in roasting, packaging and brewing methods have drastically altered the beverage over the past 200 years. Some fun facts about coffee. While you're still here, let's share a few more fun facts about coffee. According to the International Coffee Organization, Brazil produces over a third of the world's supply now, roughly twice as much as Vietnam, who is in second position. One of the most sought-after types is derived from an Asian palm civet's excrement. The feline-like animal consumes fruit, including coffee cherries, but cannot process the beans. Known as kopi luwak, the smooth, less acidic beverage made from the expelled seeds has come under fire from proponents of animal welfare due to the method of manufacturing. Lastly, as we touched on earlier, Mecca's founders forbade coffee because they thought it encouraged radical thought back in 1511. Due to their perception that coffee was satanic, several Italian clergymen attempted to outlaw it in the 16th century. Pope Clement VII, however, was so devoted to coffee that he lifted the ban and had it baptized in 1600. Because of its alleged associations with rebellious mood, the Swedish government made both coffee and coffee paraphernalia, including cups and dishes, illegal as recently as the 18th century. 
Which one of these coffee fun facts was most interesting to you? As you're now aware, your morning cup of coffee has an interesting past. However, you probably pour it without even giving it a second thought. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment which is your favorite, hot coffee or iced coffee. As always, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this one. If you want to be notified every time we upload a new video, click the notification bell as well. Until next time.